Alright, this video is going to be very dark because it's late outside and um, it's dark outside. But I'm just going to speak and make this video. So what's important is what I'm saying, not really that you could actually see me. Um, I just wanted to share my initial feedback about the concealed carry course. Um, we haven't even touched on the law just yet. We're going to do that tomorrow. Um, but just my feedback so far is pretty much everybody that was in the course, there's probably like 12 of us, everybody that was in the class, including the instructor, was pretty much like a lot older in the 40s, 50s, um, maybe even 60s, and a lot of them, pretty much most of them were all like out of shape, just very out of shape, and in poor like physical health, and I think that's a sad thing, um, including the instructor, and they were having us watch this video of these two people like testing the guns doing some uh, TV show and they were like really old and out of shape too and I just thought that was kind of sad because I mean they're talking about self-defense and like how important it is to to know how to use the gun and, and firearm safety and uh, you know they kept talking about how important it was to clean the gun and everything and you know so then you because your life depends on it but then at the same time they're not even like taking care of their health but then they're like so concerned about this gun and I think that you know I felt like a lot of just almost like an obsession with the gun that I think is, is not really good um, I think it's just a tool you know to use for survival but you shouldn't get too obsessed with the tool and that's what I see with like martial arts in general are people that overly focus on one aspect of the martial arts and this is just another part of that. You know, people are just so focused on just the guns. And you got people that are so focused on just the swords, like the samurai. And then you got people that are, you know, so focused on the close quarter combat, like the Wing Chun people. You know, they got people that are just focused on just the punching techniques, like the boxing. People are just so focused on the kicking techniques, and that's like the Taekwondo. Like, everybody's, you know, and then the Jiu Jitsu is just focused on a joint lock. It's like, everybody's so focused on one aspect, and they don't see it as a whole. And I see that there's a problem with that. You know, and. What was really a huge uh, like discouragement also is that if you use that gun as self-defense, um, you're gonna have some major legal problems. Even if you are justified, you still need to hire an attorney, a defense attorney, self-defense, a self-defense defense attorney, and he said that. You can, they're gonna charge you a minimum of twenty to twenty-five thousand um, just to re, just for his retainer, and um, all the costs associated with purchasing that firearm. And he's talking about all the extra things you gotta do, like the ammunition, and everything, and he's saying that you should be going to go shooting at the range every month, at least and all these different costs associated, you know, with owning a firearm. Holsters and new types of apparel. 
and all these gun laws, you know, they're very strict, especially here in Chicago. And uh, if you carry the gun at the wrong place where you're not supposed to, you could uh, get in some serious uh, legal problems. You know, if you get arrested or the police um, find the gun on you. So, you know, there's all that, and then he's talking about cleaning the gun all the time. You know, he's talking about cleaning the gun at least every month. Or you had to clean the gun every single time after you use it. Like, all that stuff kind of turns me off about, like, all this overemphasis on the gun. It's kind of like the car t situation. I don't really like cars. You know, I, I'm not that mechanical type of person. But, um... You know, I mean, and it's like the people that train in the martial arts for many years, they could be like much more physically fit and much more capable of defending themselves like unarmed wise. But you got all these old unfit people that end up getting the edge over the martial artists, a huge edge over the martial arts because they have these firearms. And it's like, there's a lot of money involved, a lot of time, a lot of research into the law in order to stay, um, you know, in order to, to keep keep that advantage over the the the, the common person, the average cit citizen, you know, because if um, all these old people and unfit people get armed um, they could pretty much take out any of the unarmed people no problem so I see that um, martial artists um, they have a huge disadvantage if they do not train in the firearms and, and get acquainted with what the laws are and basically take advantage of this constitutional right that we have um, severely limits your ability to truly defend yourself in a truly life-threatening situation but there's a lot of training involved there's a lot of money involved there's a lot of time involved and potentially a lot of headaches involved that are not that it's not fun you know but it's a part of it all and It's, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's not, uh, not everything is positive. You know, there's a lot of, there's some negative to, to all this, but I see that to really be a modern day martial artist, utilizing modern technology for survival, this is necessary, but it is annoying, you know, having to go through 16 hours of training, driving back and forth, which is a long distance, paying out all these fees, and then you gotta get the gun, which costs like lots of money, like almost a thousand dollars. You gotta get all these permits and licenses, and then you gotta um, you gotta train with it. Train with this no problem, but that costs money, you know, for all the ammunition you gotta buy, and then you gotta keep cleaning the gun. And then you gotta worry about the lead and, and, you know, not letting the lead affect your health negatively and not letting, you know, the lead get into your home where it affects your family. And um, all these firearm safety protocols, they're extremely important because if you, you know, there could easily be an accident and then you end up shooting yourself by accident or shooting somebody else by accident. Um, there's a lot of things that are uh, very serious about this that you gotta put in consideration. Um, but nonetheless, this is where the society has gone, and this is this is the this is the um, the culture that we live in. Um, you can see that these people love their guns and they love this sense of power 
and ability to take another person's life with the pull of a trigger. And um, if you don't really, if you if you don't really, tr you know, arm yourself up like these people are armed, you know, they pretty much maintain that total power and control. And I think that that's that's not good. You know, I see that um, we need to maintain that edge. Even though it is a headache, we still need to do it. And that's why I'm doing this. Um, and that's what I see.